Hi, this is Frank Shamrock, MMA legend, UFC superstar, and you're listening to MMA Crip Fighting Talk. Gregory Stone, MMAcrip.com. On today's show, we'll be discussing the fight announcement between Stephen Bonner and Tito Ortiz. Also, we'll be discussing the brief scuffle in the cage at last night's Bellator 123 event. Uh, joining me on today's show, we have MMAcrip.com's Derek Love. Welcome to the show, Derek. Thanks for having me, Greg. Yeah, it's my pleasure, Derek. Uh, well, let's start with the, the scuffle there, Derek. Um, Scott Colker was in the centre of the cage. He was introducing uh, Stephen Bonner first. Um, with Stephen Bonner was a mystery man. Uh, he had a little, as some people would call it, a gimp mask. Um, <laughs> the first mask, Derek, it was like something that you would wear for a robbery. And then the second mask underneath was like what you'd wear for a horror movie or like a weird sex scene or something. <laughs> he had two <laughs> fucking... The, the second mask was the creepiest mask. He should have just left that on, but he pulled it straight off. Anyway, the mystery man was Justin McCulley. He was uh, in the cage with Stephen Bonner. The fight was announced, and um, Tito was very anxious. He was pacing around the cage. Stephen went to the mic first. Um, he, did he let loose on the mic? He... Um, Blatantly told Tito that old friend, old managers are coming out of the woodwork. They want to see him fall. They want to see Stephen Bonner kick his ass. Um, and then he unveiled uh, Justin McCulley. Uh, Tito was getting very anxious at this point. Um, and then uh, before he handed, before the mic was handed to um, Tito Ortiz, he let loose with the Jenny Jameson comment. Um, a little below the belt for my liking, but we'll get to that in just a minute. But... Um, to me, it was pure gold and pure entertainment. And I must say, Derek, it was a good fight to begin with. I was looking forward to it. It was a, a decent fight, you know, just off the name value alone. But um, after last night and after the brief scuffle and the raw emotions that were shown in the cage, and I mean raw emotions because that's what it was. But um, there is a lot of fans out there who disagree with me, Derek. Um, they call it too WWE style. Um, a lot of them mention the pro wrestling, to be honest with you, TNA, WWE, they're all saying it's like pro wrestling. But for me, Derek, I liked it. I don't care that people are calling it WWE. Um, but for you and your taste, Derek, because you watch wrestling, you watch uh, MMA, did you think it was a little pro wrestling-like? And was you happy with it going in that direction? Hey, you know what, Greg? It was a little uh, WWE-like, but I loved it. Personally, I... After that, everything that happened in the cage there, I want to see these guys fight now. Yeah. Like, I'm I'm pumped for this card. Usually Bellator cards, you know, don't do much for me if there's not a champ or a title fight on it or anything. But, you know, everything about what happened in that cage I like, except for the, uh, you know, mystery man stuff. That was unnecessary and kind of dumb. Oh, but... don't say that, Derek. Don't say that. That was like, oh, do you remember... If you watch, see, I'm, a, I'm an old pro wrestling fan too. Back in WCW, uh, Ric Flair, he wore a mask for ages. You know, he was this mystery man. Uh, you also had like the likes of uh, Fake Sting, etc. I love it when there's a mask involved and somebody's, you know, there's a big mystery behind it. But this one's personal. This is like skin deep. Well, I was talking about pro wrestling. It, in terms of that, like a mystery man behind the mask, it was typical pro wrestling. It was like, it was right out of a pro wrestling book. You know, something that a booker would do. But it, to me, it was absolutely amazing. Um, I just spoke to Justin McCulley, the guy behind the mask. You will listen to that interview soon. But um, he told me that the mask was his idea. And for me, Derek, it was like... Um, it gave the raw emotion, Derek. Like, if you're Tito Ortiz, just imagine you're Tito Ortiz now. You're in the cage. You know, you're already amped up. Uh, Justin McCulley told me that he thought Tito Ortiz was drinking. So he's a bit tipsy. He's a bit lightheaded. You know, he's uh, a bit fired up. And he's got this mystery guy in there with a mask on. It's never happened before. Never, ever happened. I've never seen this in MMA before, ever. So he's live on TV. He's live on Spike TV in front of millions of viewers. Or hundreds of thousands of viewers. I'm not too sure on the numbers, but um, possibly hundreds of thousands. Now, you're faced with this guy who's betrayed you. First of all, you're wondering who the fuck it is. You're obviously assuming it's somebody you know. And then it turns out it's the guy who's betrayed you. And it's a long-time training partner, a long-time friend, you know. And when the guy takes off the mask, could you imagine Tito's feelings and raw emotion? You know, it's got to be shooting through the roof. And it showed because he went for Stefan. He tried talking out, but he just couldn't do it. His temper was getting the better of him more and more and more. Then he just, you know, he fumbled his words. And that was it. He's like, fuck this shit and went after him. 
So for me, Derek, the mask was the key. It was the key to the whole thing. You could have had Justin McCully walking there and see it would have been like, ah, what's his problem? Why is he in the cage? What's, he, what's to do with him? Yeah, we fell out. He stopped talking to me. He stopped answering my calls. But why is he in the cage? But Tito could have prepared himself a little bit. You know, this way, he couldn't. He didn't know who he was. He had nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. He had to deal with it there and then. But not just there and then, but in front of thousands of people. Hundreds of thousands of people. And we saw the result. His temper got the better of him. And a fucking... I don't know what you would call it because there's no punches thrown. But it was like a scuffle, a wrestling match ensued. And it was... To me, that was the key. It was absolutely perfect with the mask. Why didn't you like the mask, Derek? It, it just looks so silly. He unveiled this guy, and this guy, I didn't even know who the hell it was when I first seen him. It's just standing there, like, you know, doesn't say anything. He's just kind of like, you know, what's up? And then you could tell. It did get to Tito, though. You could tell. Yeah. He, he was tripping over his words more than usual. But... <laughs> more than usual. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I don't know. Just the whole thing, you know, a bunch of adults... Like, you know, it's real life more than, you know, pro wrestling. And it just looks silly to me, the way it came off on TV. Well, the reason I stopped watching pro wrestling, Derek, I'll be honest, is um, I used to watch a lot of pro wrestling. I love the storylines. It's something that I'm missing in MMA, to be honest with you. Obviously, I get the raw... Well, the reason I stopped watching pro wrestling, because it was just too, too predictable. You knew what was going to happen, and it just wasn't brutal enough for me, you know? It just wasn't real enough. I'm sorry to say that to the pro wrestling fans, but I wanted something brutal, raw, and real. You know, right down to the bone. As real as you could get. You know, as honest as you could get. There's no more honest than fighting. Obviously, you've got judges' decisions, what don't go the right way, you get injuries, etc. But, um, you know, you get two guys walking and the guy who prepared. It doesn't even have to be a better guy, really. It's just a guy who shows more heart and determination on the night and can take a whooping over the other guy and dish out more punishment. He gets his hand raised. Maybe it goes on skill. I've learned a lot. The more I watch MMA, it's on skill. It's on, you know, timing, where you're at, who you're training with, etc. There's so much that plays into it. But the thing I've missed since I've stopped watching pro wrestling is the drama. I miss the drama in mixed martial arts, Derek. You know, you get a face-off, two guys square off, you know. They mean mug each other. And then they fight. I like it when there's, you know, raw emotion there. Like, um... Let's, let's get a good example. Chuck, Chuck, Chuck Liddell, Tito Ortiz. You know, they used to train together. Tito thought it, Chuck was jealous. Uh, you know, Chuck thought he was a bit of a pompous twat. You know, a bit of a pussy. He was hurting him in training. You're not the real champion. I'm going to come up your ass. That was a real, you know, drama. A real storyline to it. That got me excited. You know, Randy Couture, Tito Ortiz. That was a good fight, but there was nothing there to it, really. Yeah, he was the interim champion. Tito Ortiz was coming back to prove he's the best. So there was, there was a little story in there. But a lot of the time, Derek, it's just two guys going in and fighting. Nothing nothing there. You know, it's mainly our job as media to create the story, to get the story out there. But a lot of the time, you don't know the story. And you can't really... You know, it's fighting's to do with rankings. It's who's the best in the world. It's not about drama a lot of the time. But sometimes, there's nothing better than a good old raw fashion fight with drama behind it, you know, and this is what this is, Derek, and, oh, jeez, it's got me pumped anyway. Just the drama behind it, it's got me pumped. Well, um, see, go on, Derek. See, Greg, that's why I like the John Jones-Daniel Cormier fight. I'll admit that some drama, when they had the whole weigh-in scuffle there, I want to see John Jones and Daniel Cormier fight. I haven't wanted a fight that this bad in years. It's same with Michael Bisping, Luke Rockhold. Those guys don't like each other. Yeah. Everyone knows it. I cannot wait for that fight now. Well, you mentioned those two things, Derek. Obviously, the Daniel Cormier, John Jones, it went a bit beyond the usual, you know, what you expect. Because the UFC they don't allow fighting. You know, unless you're in that cage when you're supposed to fight, they don't allow fighting. Do you know what I mean? You sing with Paul Daly after he punched Josh, you know, he punched Josh Koscheck after the bell. You saw what happened there. They cut Paul Daly. He's been begging to come back. They still haven't let him back. So uh, that's a whole different story, whether it's right or wrong, that they kept Daniel Cormier and John Jones. Obviously, they're not going to cut them to, you know, whether that's right or wrong, that's a whole other story. But it's very rare that the UFC allows such things to happen. The UFC would never let a mystery guy come in the cage. They would never allow something like this. And to me, the UFC are the best. Yeah, Bellator, they got Viacom behind them, and 
But the thing with that is, Viacom, unless they're getting money in, you know, unless they're getting pay-per-view money, unless they're getting views, they're not going to give much money back to Bellator. So, Bellator needs to create the numbers. And how they do this is by being different. And letting fighters be themselves, just giving the fighters a little bit of leeway. You know, Stefan, you can bring in your mystery guy. It's fine. That's the way forward for Bellator for me. Would you agree, Derek? Yes, I do. And I, I kind of hope they announce all their... Uh you know, big fights this way. Let them come in the cage. You know, even if there isn't a bad blood, let them come in the cage. Announce your fights this way. I, I like that. Well, there's been talk of a uh, Bellator signing Mayor Miller. Could you imagine if, if you let this guy in the cage and be himself? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I'm talking about um, people complaining about it being like WWE and TNA and fake wrestling, shit like that. But are these the same people who paid to watch Chael Sonnen fight because he used to, you know, be funny, like a comedian? You know, that was a lot like WWE to some people. You know, some of the things he was saying. I think with the Anderson Silva, that was real. He had a personal problem with, with Anderson Silva. He didn't like the way he was a bully. Mocking fighters like Damian Meyer, And he felt like his style could beat Anderson Silva style, and basically it nearly did at UFC 117. He nearly beat him, he nearly took his belt. And obviously Anderson come back with a triangle, and shit flared up from there, it was real, it was raw. Anderson need him, yeah they said, you know, come to barbecue after the fight, etc. But, you know, after that, apart from the Vandalay Silva, which me and you discussed if it was fake or not, shit people did not like that show, Derek, that got so many thumbs down, they did not like us calling that fucking fight fake. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, whether that was fake or not, after watching the footage, I do think it was real, to be honest now. But the little footage what we had at the time, it looked fake. And for certain reasons, obviously, he didn't dump him on the scales, etc. But apparently there was an injury caused due to that, and, you know. But um, these people who are calling it fake, are these the same people who bought into Chael Sonnen all this time? It's fair to say, Derek, would you agree? Yeah, I do agree with that, Greg. Um... Yeah, I, and like, I don't know, if, you know, it's hard to say if, you know, what happens and, or, you know, if that's fake or not. You know, it, you know, maybe Scott Coker did tell these guys, you know, do something, make, you know, make people want to see you guys fight. Or maybe this was 100%, you know, this was Stefan Bonner's idea to get Tito's head, make them, you know, hype the fight himself. You know, these guys, you know, if more people watch their fight, as far as I know, these guys make more money. So, you know, they want people to want to watch them fight. Well, we're talking about it being interesting and letting the fighters be themselves. But, you know, he talked about Tito's family last night and Tito called them druggies, basically. You're a drug, you're a drug addict. You're a drug addict. Do you think, um, you know, they should be told, yeah, be yourself, but there's a limit on where you can go because we don't want the shit getting out of hand. Well, it's fun. It's exciting. Is there a line that needs to be drawn, Derek? And where do you think that line is? Well, to me, if, you know, if Stefan Bonner did spring this up on Tito Ortiz, then, you know, I guess Tito's kind of got to be able to defend himself somehow. And I guess, I don't know if Stefan Bonner's ever been a drug addict or not. I, I think about the steroids or whatever it was. That, yeah, I guess he failed one drug test or maybe two drug tests, but... I don't know if that you can consider him being a drug addict. I don't know if he's addicted to steroids. And yeah, I don't know about Justin McCall at all. He could be, you know, a heroin addict for all I know. <laughs> well, the big problem here, Derek, is um, this is a big fight. People are bought into this now. People are excited. Obviously, there's a lot of people who are not interested. They call it WWE. But um, there is a lot of fans who are interested in this now. You know, the... The, the line's been drawn, you know. Stefan's on one side, Tito's on the other. The battle lines have been drawn, you know. And if Tito Ortiz gets injured in this fight, because he's been injured in a lot of fights, Derek, now. We've always looked forward to Tito Ortiz fights. You know, the third Chuck Liddell fight. And he's got injured. There's a Mark Coleman bout too, I think. Uh, I'm not sure. Did Mark Coleman get injured? And maybe Tito stepped up. Forrest Griffin stepped up, but anyway, there's been a lot of bouts where Tito Ortiz got injured, and rightly so, he's not faking these injuries. You would think he is, because he gets so many, but this is how injury-prone the guy is. Now, the big worry for me, Derek, is if Tito Ortiz gets injured. Now, 
How much does this affect Bellator, Tito Ortiz and Stefan Bonner if Tito Ortiz gets injured? Do you think it affects them at all? Oh, I... You start hyping a fight up like this, and then, you know, Tito gets injured again. You know, with Tito Ortiz, the, the guy's made of glass, so it could be damn near anything, from a neck injury to a knee injury to need some dental work to get done. Like, who knows why he might pull out of this fight. It could be anything. <laughs> well, you referred to Daniel Cormier and John Jones before. Now, obviously, Dan, uh, John Jones got injured. Now, obviously, if Daniel Cormier got injured, then instantly you could have had Alexander Gustafsson step up. Do you know what I mean? He could have stepped up to the plate. Or oh, was he injured too? Was he injured too, Derek? I think that's why Daniel Cormier got the bout. Well, anyway, the UFC, they can they can cope with this type of stuff. They can cope with injuries, you know what I mean? Obviously, Bellator can't. They've got they've got a lot of young fighters coming up who were really good. They can probably beat the likes of TYT, Stefan Bonner. But they just haven't got that name value yet. And that's where Bellator needs to bring these guys along. They need to market these guys, but they're not there yet. Right at this moment in time, to fall back on, there's only Emmanuel Newton and Quinton Jackson. And now Emmanuel Newton's defended his belt, so you can't fall back on him. You know, if he gets injured, he has to, you know, take six months out or something. Can't fall back on him, even three months. And then the last one is Quinton Jackson. And if you get Quinton Jackson on the card with Tito Ortiz, that's going to be a lot of money you have to pay both fighters for a Spike TV card. So that's a no-go, basically. So, I know Bellator on Spike TV. This is a great fight to put on Spike TV. But, um, for me, they start needing... They're going to start need to... They're going to start needing to... Give the younger fighters a go. Do you know what I mean? And start building them up a little bit. Putting some hype behind them. Because, while this is a great fight, your roster's still thin in terms of name talent. Would you agree, Derek? No, absolutely, Greg. You can't, you know... Like you said, you can't just call up, you know, Rampage on, you know, a month's notice to fight Stefan Bonner. That's gonna that card's uh, payroll is gonna be massive. Then, like, we don't know exactly how much Rampage is making in Bellator. At least I don't, but I imagine it's a pretty good sum of money. Well, Derek, I feel that pretty much covers the show today. Um, I'm looking forward to it. If you guys who want to call it WWE, you're not looking forward to it. I like the change in Bellatoy up. There's more to come. I hope they get the likes of Mayhem Miller involved and let him be himself. You know, give the fighters a little bit a little bit more leeway. Like Colin Fletcher, when he was in the UFC, he couldn't do certain things. He couldn't do his walkouts. This is sheer entertainment. Everybody loves Colin Fletcher's walkout, you know? They're like, oh, what's Colin going to do this fight? What's Colin going to do next fight? You know, everybody loves that sort of stuff. The weigh-ins, let people be who they want to be at the weigh-ins. You know, I think they do a little bit. But anyway, I like the direction Bellator are going in, and I think it's a really positive way forward, so I'm looking forward to it. Uh, are you looking forward to it, Derek? Yes, I am, and I I really, like, you know, I, this helps, you know, separate the UFC and Bellator a little bit, you know, make them different. And I think that's, you know, what Bellator needs to do if they want to start, you know, growing themselves they can't copy the ufc to a t they have to separate themselves a little bit if they want to become a true you know without a doubt number two promotion in the world well they've got viacom behind them like i said i alluded to before viacom need to start seeing the numbers that's all they need to see the numbers and once they start seeing the numbers then they can start giving more money to bring in more fighters better fighters and then they can show slowly but surely go to pay-per-view now and again I'm not talking pay-per-view every time. Maybe two or three pay-per-views a year, but massive pay-per-views. And you can build off your Spike TV cards to do that. you know. And that's how you can compete with the UFC. In terms of popularity, maybe not financially, because the UFC have grown so much all over the world, marketing-wise. The UFC probably pull in so much money that Bellator can't. That takes such a long time to do. But in terms of TV ratings and people turn up to your arenas, I think Bellator can match the UFC if they continue to go this way, Derek. But um, I think that's a wrap from us for today's show. To all listeners at home, thank you for watching as usual, and be sure to check out MMAEquip.com.